Are you also looking at free cash flow? I know Evercore ISI came without a list, uh, came out with a list a few weeks ago looking at free cash flow names. I don't know if you own any of these. I looked at your disclosures, but are you focusing on that? Always focused on that. Always, 100% of the time. I mean, I, I love what Kevin's saying, and he knows it. We may not have been in person for the last three years, but we've talked, and, and this is how I invest, and it's how he invests. Why? Because he's a business owner, and he knows that cash flow is the lifeblood that makes companies exist. Occasionally, you can get a company that can get transfusions from the capital markets. Those transfusions can't go on forever. Free cash flow is what companies live on. Now, extending what you're saying, Kevin, that leads to something I've believed for quite some time, which is that we are in the middle of a growth-to-value transition. I've said this a lot. Last 10 years, we had growth-leading value, like crushing value. The 10 years before that, it was value over growth. There's a reason why this pendulum swings, and it oscillates in long periods, because as people come back to the markets in a downturn like this, they go to what was tried and true uh, during the previous cycle, and that's been growth. But people are seeing, even as they get back into you know, technology stocks, we're going to talk about that later, that they get their hands slapped. And then they start to look elsewhere, and they start to look at what Kevin and I talk about, free cash flow in companies for which there is a fundamental reason, whether we're talking about materials, energies, industrials, financial. There's a fundamental reason. Stop me if you've heard this before. But the next few years, you're going to see the benefits of supply chain onshoring. By the way, just yesterday, Micron announced another $100 billion of spending in the U.S., CapEx spending on semiconductor plants. And that's a drop in the bucket with what's been going on. That all requires those types of companies that I just mentioned, that Kevin's talking about, that increases demand for their services and products. That's why I like this space. I'm with Kevin on this. All right, one quick note right now. I want to talk about the markets for a second. Off the session lows right now, the Dow actually only down, I want to say only down about 180 points. When we started the show down about 300 points. The S&P and the NASDAQ both rising about a quarter of a percent. So some upside to the market right here. The dollar, Kevin's back. Because Kevin's is, is it all about Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> you, you yeah, can't it's because I'm in the studio. Down. By Frank, the time I'm leaving this set, we're going to be up on the Dow. Watch this. <laughs> I don't, we'll have to watch Frank, and the, see. Frank, the dollar. Pe- Joe, I want to come over to you. Yeah. Frank, the dollar peaked at 1020 this morning. Ten minutes later, that's when the bottom was in for the S&P. Everything right now is a reaction to the U.S. dollar and to Treasury yields. It's OK. Understand the environment. But that's what the market's trading off of right now. And it does speak to uh, a lot of the companies that everyone's identified, which have strong free cash flow generation. And Jimmy mentioned some of the material, commodity, industrial names. Those are the ones that have the highest sensitivity. That's where you're going to find the opportunity if everything is pricing off where the dollar is. But clearly today, the response in the S&P, it's because the dollar peaked at 1020. You know, speaking of dollar, one company that's been impacted somewhat by the dollar has been Apple. Obviously, a lot of sales overseas. I believe almost uh, two-thirds of their sales overseas. You recently trimmed Apple. Kind of give us a sense of why you wanted to get out of Apple right now. Yeah, I trimmed it last week. Um, Apple's a great company. Now, here's here's the details. I still own a little over 3% of it in my portfolios. That's actually a lot, right? But it's about one half of what the market weighting is in the S&P 500. So I'm meaningfully underweighted. And look, it's really just this simple. Apple's a great company, but its multiple is not going to expand going forward. From the low 20s it's in right now, it just doesn't have the earnings per share growth that would merit a higher multiple than what it's going to have. So that being the case, share price on Apple is going to appreciate somewhere in the high single digits, which is where over the next few years its earnings per share growth is going to be. Why? Because it's actually kind of a mature company. It's not like they're going to come out with the next unheralded, unheard of product like the iPhone was 10 years ago. So fine company, but that's not where the leadership is going to come from. That's why I trimmed it. Um, Also, obviously, the news in the short term about some production uh, uh, reductions, if you will, even if that's just walking back some increases that hadn't happened. Look, it's very simple. This is not where market leadership is going to come from over the next few years. And I still have shares, but I have meaningfully less than the market overall.